Hello guys, welcome to Clear Road Driving. Today, I will drive through a sample driving route towards Seve, Gothenburg. This is an actual exam route that examiners will ask you to drive to if you are considering Gothenburg hinsing an exam center for the practical exam. Actually, if you are taking the practical exam in Gothenburg hinsing an exam center, you will not finish your practical exam without driving at least through some of the roads that I am driving through today. However, even if you are not planning to take your practical exam in Gothenburg in Singen Exam Center, I am pretty sure that you will get valuable information from this video about driving in residential areas, country roads, railway crossings, and much more. You can also get my practical driving exam route pass on the link that just popped up on the top right corner. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not done it yet. I need to leave the next roundabout on the first exit to go to seven. need to go straight on the next roundabout to go to seven. I can use both the left and right lane to go to straight, but I prefer using the right lane. To get detailed explanation about roundabouts, please see the video that just popped up on the top right corner. After this roundabout, the speed limit changes to 70 km per hour, so I will have to accelerate to that speed. Not also that the two lanes will merge into one soon. Seve is straight ahead. Ahead, it is the left lane that takes me straight. The left lane in the soon, so we'll have to switch to the right lane. I need to check left mirror and left blind spot before the left lane ends to make sure that no vehicle is rushing to switch to my lane dangerously. Check right mirror and right blind spot before taking the right lane here. Seve is straight ahead on the next roundabout as well. Mm -hmm. 
Soon, I will turn to the left to drive in residential areas. The sign I marked in red circle reserves the left lane for turning to the left. So I will switch to the left lane right away. Please be aware that if the speed limit is 70 km per hour or less, I can drive on the left lane, if that is the lane that takes me to my destination. And vehicles from behind me are allowed to overtake me using the right lane in this condition. I need to give way for vehicles from the opposite lane and I will drive only when there is a safe cap. In dense residential areas, the recommended speed is 30 km per hour and in all the intersections, priority to the right rule applies. When the examiner takes you to residential areas like this one, mainly he aims to test your scanning skill. In residential areas, there are multiple spots where people might show up suddenly. So drivers need to be proactive and scan the risky spots continuously. In this video, I placed an arrow toward the gates of the first few houses to indicate that those are the places where you should look at. So your A should move continuously from left to right to scan for a potential danger that might arise suddenly. Please be aware that the examiner watches your A's to evaluate if you are really scanning the area properly. Obviously, even though the arrows stop appearing on the screen, I still continue scanning the areas where people might emerge from. I am going to turn to the left on this junction. As mentioned previously, the rule that applies here is priority to the right. But the view on the right is completely blocked by the bush. At this point, I cannot see if there is a car coming from the right side. So, in this situation, if the view is completely blocked, I need to slowly creep to the junction and make the turn only after I make sure that there is no vehicle from the right. If you are going for a manual driving license, you should approach such type of junctions using first gear. I will turn back on the next junction.
On the next junction, I'm turning to the right. The visibility is better when I approach the junction from this direction. So, in this case, I do not need to creep. If you are going for a manual license, you can turn using second gear on this junction. Look at the gentleman that suddenly showed up from the left. In this case, he is a bit away from me. But this could have happened when I just arrived at the gate from where he is coming out. To make it worse, it could have been multiple children running blindly after each other while playing hide and seek or thief and police. And you might not do sharp emergency break if you are not actively scanning the area. So. Scanning is crucial skill that you need to develop not just for your practical exam, but for your normal driving as well after getting your driving license. At this point, I can already look through the bush to check if there is a vehicle or other danger that is approaching to the junction from the other side. Before making the turn, since my view to the right is blocked, I need to creep and make sure that there is no vehicle from the right. Back to the main road that goes toward the Seve. Watch the giveaway sign here. If there is any vehicle on the main road, I need to give way. So I lean forward up to the giveaway mark where I can see vehicles coming from both left and the right side. If the information so far is useful for you, please subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you will instantly get any new educational videos that I will post in the future. Seve is straight on the next intersection. Before the intersection, there is a pedestrian crossing. So, when I approach the pedestrian crossing, I will lift my feet from the accelerator for a short while and look to the right and to the left side. The speed limit changed to 70 km per hour, but a roundabout is coming pretty soon, so I don't need to increase my speed to 70 km per hour. On this roundabout, I will stop following the direction toward the seven and I will turn to the left on the second exit. Note that the speed limit has changed to 50 km per hour, and there is no sign telling me that this road is a priority road. Thus, if I face intersections ahead of me on this road, Priority to the right rule applies unless other giveaway signs are placed on the intersection.
Here is a small road emerging from the right. As you can see, there is no other sign that dictates which road has priority. So priority to the right rule applies here. Thus, if there is a vehicle emerging from the right, I will have to give way to it. Even if there is no vehicle from the right, I need to lift my feet from the accelerator momentarily and look to the right to show to the examiner that I am checking the right side. Watch the warning for an exit. This sign is warning me that there is an exit ahead of me, which I cannot see at this point, and which can create a potential dangerous situation. So I need to drive very cautiously. Look at the exit that the previous sign warned me about. A vehicle exiting from the road indicated by the red arrow cannot spot me from the distance due to the curve that I just passed. So I might not have enough time to avoid a crash if I approach this area with a speed. Watch also that the recommended speed limit is 30 km per hour after this point. This sign does not enforce the speed limit. Thus, the speed limit is still 50 km per hour even after this sign but it is advisable to drive with 30 km per hour. So I accept the advice and reduce my speed. This is the end of the 30 km per hour advisable speed limit. Notice also that there is no sign on this junction that dictates who has priority. So, priority to the right rule applies here as well. I need to accelerate to the new 70 km per hour speed limit. I need to reduce my speed to 50 km per hour before reaching to the new speed limit sign ahead of me. Watch this car. It has the opening shore sign on the top. So you can tell that this road is famous by the examiners in Gothenburg Hinsingen exam center. While I was out for recording this video, I saw at least three or four cars with evening shore sign and two cars with shore prof sign. Unfortunately, this is the only one where my camera captured the evening shore mark. So it is evident that you need to be familiar with this road if you are considering Hinsingen for your practical examination.
I am driving with a speed close to 50 km per hour at the moment. But I have a new 70 km per hour speed limit in front of me. However, look at the lady I marked with green circle. She is leading a horse. So, I should not definitely accelerate at this point. Instead, I need to lift my feet completely off the accelerator and reduce my speed a bit more. Then, I should stay away as far as possible on the side from the horse and watch the horse's reaction carefully. Watch the stop sign here. When you see this sign, you must stop right before the white solid stop line and check left and right before driving to the new road. Please be aware that you must stop even if there is no vehicle on the road that you are joining to. It is after you completely stop just before the white solid line that you turn your head to the left and to the right to check the existence of vehicles on the new road. If you do not stop on this sign, it is automatic that you will fail the practical exam right away. It is equivalent to driving through a red traffic light. I need to accelerate to the new 90 km per hour speed limit. You should recognize this car now. We met again on the high speed road. While driving with this speed, I try to look further ahead so that I will identify hazards as early as possible. I check my mirrors regularly and track the vehicles behind me. And please note that I don't have a fence between my lane and the opposite lane. So I will have to strictly stay on my lane. Random wobbling or drifting from my lane may lead to a dangerous situation with the cars driving on the opposite direction.
When I see the roundabout warning, I lift my feet from the accelerator and try to reduce my speed to 70 km per hour before reaching the speed limit sign that is ahead of me. I go to the left on the third exit on this roundabout. Railway crossing is ahead of me and I am three stripes away from the railway crossing. I am two stripes away. I am one stripe away from the railway crossing, which means that after a short distance I will encounter the railway crossing. When the examiner takes you to railway crossings, he expects you to demonstrate the following two things. First, while getting closer to the railway crossing, you need to turn your head to the left and to the right few times and make sure that there is no train approaching from both sides. Second, once you make sure that there is no train approaching, put your feet on the accelerator hard and pass through the railway crossing as quickly as possible. If you are going for a manual driving license, second gear is the best to approach and pass through the railway crossing. If you try to pass through the railway crossing slowly, or you try to stop on the railway crossing, that is a guarantee for failing the practical exam. And the examiner will definitely intervene and will put his feet on the accelerator forcefully, because this will create a dangerous situation for both your and the examiner's life. Thirty km per hour new speed limit is ahead of me. I need to give way to vehicles on the other road. This is a challenge especially for those going for a manual license. I will drive up to the give way road markings on the top and momentarily stop to check that there is no vehicle on the new road. This giveaway sign does not require me to stop, as long as I check both the left and the right side properly. But because of the hill, I recommend to momentarily stop on the top and make sure that the new road is clear from vehicles.
watch the cyclist warning. It is warning me of cyclists that might show up suddenly on the cyclist passage I marked in red. I will lift my feet from the accelerator for a while and also watch carefully on the cycle passage. I go straight on the next roundabout. I turn to the right on the next traffic light. Since I am turning to the right, the light which changed to green does not apply to me. I need to wait until the filter light turns to green. You can get detailed explanation about traffic lights on the video that just popped up on the top right corner. I take the exit toward the centrum on the next roundabout. I progress to the 70 km per hour speed limit. I go straight on the second exit on this roundabout. I will take the exit toward the centrum, so I can use both the right and the left lane, but 
I prefer the right lane for going straight. I will use the third exit to go back to traffic barricade. Here I drive cautiously as people might suddenly emerge from the front of the bus. The parked car is blocking my way, so I will have to stop and wait until I get space to go forward. I am turning to the left, thus I need to give way for vehicles on the opposite direction and need to wait until I get a safe gap. We are back to traffic work. Thank you for watching. I hope you find valuable information for your practical driving exam preparation. Please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not done it yet.